You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Gold, crude oil, corn, soybeans, and more. With so many tradable products, the futures options market can be an intimidating place. How can you possibly keep track of the latest trading developments across so many different products? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Welcome to This Week in Futures Options, the program designed to help active futures options traders stay on top of this ever-changing marketplace. Each week, we'll break down the top trades, hot products, volatility explosions, and much more. This Week in Futures Options streams live, so be sure to check out our live stream via the Mixler app. That's M-I-X-L-R. Or join our live chat room at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. Whether you're an experienced veteran or a newcomer looking to separate the wheat from the lean hogs, this week in Futures Options has the information you can't find anywhere else. This week in Futures Options is brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. For more information and educational resources about Futures Options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. And now, get ready to break down the latest Futures Options trading activity. It's time for This Week in Futures Options. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again for TWIFO This Week in Futures Options, the program where we break down everything going on on the Futures Options side of the fence. Maybe we'll talk some ag, some energy, some rates, some metals, some equities. You never know. What's going to make it on the show? That's why you have to tune in every week. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever-engaging, at least we tend to think so, Options Insider Radio Network. Reminding you out there, if you do like what you hear, do keep rating and reviewing out there. It does help all the new folks continue to discover the program. We saw a huge upswing in particularly for TWIFO towards the end of last year. I mean, the whole network's been banging ever since uh, the pandemic, obviously, but TWIFO really turning it up to 11 last year. So that's no small part due to a lot of you out there liking what you're seeing, rating and reviewing. So new folks can continue to discover the crazy tumultuous world of futures options. And of course, if you want more content in your life and Hey, who doesn't these days, like these markets are insane. You have questions. We have answers. They're called our pro Q and a sessions. We bring on some of the best minds in the world of derivatives, including many of the guests from this program, like Dan Gramsci and Carly Garner and Russell Rhodes and all sorts of fun, as well as legions of others out there specifically to answer your questions, as well as of course, our great options oddities show early access to a lot of exclusive content, live streams, all sorts of fun. Uh, speaking of which live streams starting a little bit later today, obviously I was just doing a rear live hit for the option block down at the SIBO headquarters. Great to see the flow master in person. Always fun when he rolls into town. So I had to take that opportunity. Of course, that bled over a little bit into the TWIFO start time, but starting now, better late than never out there. Of course, you want to get access to all that fun and a whole bunch more. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more. As we keep on rolling, it's just me in the hot seat today. So that means I get to choose as we roll on into the Movers and Shakers report. It's time to find out what's rallying on the light side and falling to the dark side at CME Group this week. It's time for the Movers and Shakers Report. 
All right, everyone. Welcome to the Movers and Shakers Report, the portion of the show where we break down everything, lighting it up to the light side, a.k.a. the upside, and to the dark side over there at CME Group this week. And it's another kind of mixed bag out there. It really depends where you're looking. If you zoom in and you kind of truncate it to the most relevant stuff, it's almost exactly 50-50. If you dial a little bit farther out, you look at the entirety of the report, then it's more biased, I would say, around 70-30 to the light side out there. But again, kind of an interesting report depending on how you look at it right now. We're going to look at it. Since I'm in the hot seat this week, I get to choose. We're going to go to the dark side first. That's kind of the way I like to lean, listeners. And let's see how many of our frequent offenders we can find this week. Last couple of weeks, we haven't had all of them. It's a rare break. They were otherwise pretty much lighting up our movers and shakers every week so far this year. Very rare. We saw all three of them. Will we get all three of them this week? Let's find out. Number five, here's one already. Lumber off 4.81%. Number four, right behind it, our old friend Lean Hogs, off to the livestock listeners, off 5.05%. If you're wondering, it was number three in the other direction last week, up 13.64%. So a wild couple of weeks for Lean Hogs listeners. Number three, soybean meal, off 5.76%. Number two, still hanging out in the beans, soybean oil, off 7.88%. And number one, to the dark side, Another one of our frequent offenders out there, it's Nat Gas off 11.61%. Man, have they come for Nat Gas. <laughs> we might have to hang out there this week. It's just been, it's, it's crazy the levels we're talking about out there now. But first, before we do that, to the light side we go. Number five, it's copper. And you can see we're kind of equidistant this week. It costs us almost 5% to break into the dark side, a little over 5 about 6% to break into the light side. So both halves, both sides, similar extremities, similar movements. This week, copper up almost 6%, 5.95%. Number four, it's oats up 6.06%. Oats has been moving quite a bit of late. Unfortunately, you know the deal. Three, eight, 10 contracts a week, maybe. Not exactly a lot for us to sink our teeth into out there in oats. Number three, back to the metals. It's silver up 7.04%. Shame Uncle Mike isn't here. He would love a little bit of silver talk out there this week. It was number four in the same direction last week, up 8.9%. So silver Getting back a lot of what it lost so far this year. Number two, class three milk. Haven't been out in dairy in quite a long time. Up 7.67%. And the number one light side mover this week, up nearly 10%, 9.78%. It's our old friend Bitcoin. So there they are, all three of them, lumber, nat gas, and Bitcoin. In this case, nat gas and Bitcoin dominating both directions this week. So our movers and shakers, our frequent offenders, all represented this week. Bitcoin up nearly 10%, 9.78%. Last week, it was number one, up 24.35%. So, yeah, it's been a banger couple of weeks for crypto. We were talking on our Crypto Rundown show earlier this week with our pal, our guest, Mr. Bill Uliberry over there from Seneca Capital Management. And I was really only half joking at this point. Is crypto the new flight to quality assets? Turns out, give a little flash poll to our audience, and it was pretty evenly split, which kind of surprised me. And I think just the notion that anyone would even think of crypto in those terms was kind of funny, but... Apparently, you folks uh, agree with that pretty much evenly 50-50 on whether it it is a flight to quality asset or not. Is it? I'm curious, listeners. Hit us up. Let us know as we keep on rolling and kick things off. We got to go to our number one dark side friend first, heading out to energy to talk some Nat Gas. It's time to tap into the deep options well of black gold, Texas tea, Nat Gas, and more. It's time to talk energy. All right, everyone, welcome to the wonderful world of energy. You know where to find this report and everything else we're going to talk about on the show today. CMEgroup.com slash TWIFO, T-W-I-F-O. Once you're there, go into that drop down and you're going to pop down two slots to energy. And then we're going to scroll on over to product family, Nat Gas. And that's where we'll begin our journey this week. And, you know, it's a good thing I'm alone in the hot seat this week. No Carly, no Dan, because I think they'd be wringing their hands at these levels we're seeing out there right now. Nat gas coming into the start of the show, 2.15 listeners. I mean, we were threatening that two handle now off nearly 8% just this week. Obviously, you dial it back to the end of last week's show off nearly 12%. So we were talking about it. She was talking about how maybe it seemed like might be some upside in the future. Dan's been kind of mystified. I've been kind of mystified at just how much they are coming for Nat gas lately. How many times we've been talking on this show, listeners, about people loading up even when we we're hanging out around two and a half, two and a quarter, people still loading up on two puts, one and three quarters puts, like they're going out of style. 
it seemed excessive to me, but hey, look at the price action. They they were right, at least so far. Again, 2.15 off about 18, almost 19 cents this week, or nearly 8%. So, wow, yeah, they just continue to come for Nat Gas. We were talking about a lot of paper last week, and you know what? Still a pretty banger week this week. 660,000 contracts on the tape. That compares to 400 to 440 usually on, on a average week out there. So a pretty active week. And of that, 36% going up in the May contract that has about 33 days to go. So we're going to hang out out there. You might be wondering, you know, what's the vol in that gas, all this movement? Yeah, it's pretty frothy. It's not quite triple digits, but it's pretty freaking close. 93 and a quarter right now, up nearly three points just this week. By the way, that May future is hanging out at about a 227. So you go all the way out to June, we're still at about a 252. And you go out to July, you're at about a 278. So a nice steep slope to that term structure out there on the future side. But still, it's all still threatening that two handle, which is impressive. And maybe a little bit surprising, or maybe you saw this coming. Maybe you're one of those listeners who's been loading up on the two puts and laughing all the way to the bank. In terms of skew, let's see, this week, Things are looking kind of interesting. Last week, we saw the, the puts 4.3% bid and the call is 1.1% cheap. So that kind of does go back to what we've been saying for a while. We've been seeing mostly modest equity skew out here. Bid to the puts, discount to the calls. That means everyone's interested in, concerned about, call it what you will, movements to the downside more than the upside. And I guess who can blame them? That's been the right move so far. Uh, this week, it's even more pronounced. The puts are nearly 10% bid, 9.7% bid. So they continue to bid up these puts as we get ever closer to that two handle. The calls, they're getting cheaper. Nobody wants to touch these things. 7.7% cheap. So I guess if you think NatCat's going to bounce, then maybe that's that's music to your ears because these calls are trading at a pretty pretty decent discount. Overall, vol level, still high, but <laughs> that skew giving you a bit of a break out there. And in terms of action, what was the big dog? Would it surprise you if I told you the two puts across the board? Because <laughs> that's pretty much the case. The two puts going out in about five days. Let's start with those. They did 54,000 contracts this week, listeners, including 22,000 today. I mean, that's a lot of paper. And then we've got, oh, about it's like 13,000 on Tuesday, 11,000 on Wednesday, 7,600 on Monday. Opening looks like most of the week, except for Monday, slightly closing on Monday. Total, like we said, 54,000 of those two puts going up. Not to be outdone, right behind it, we have the May two puts also putting up a lot of numbers this week. The big day for those, actually Tuesday. Almost 11,000 going up on Tuesday, slightly closing there. Closing in on 10,000 today, 8,600 on Wednesday, 6,600 on Monday. Kind of back and forth opening to closing the rest of the days throughout the week. Again, a total of about 35,000 going up this week here. So yeah, just two puts across the board. Again, makes a lot of sense. It's a psychologically important level. We've been flirting with it. We've been threatening it for a while. So makes sense that folks would be piling into open on that strike in both directions here. Go out to, looks like the three calls. There are some calls lighting it up. Not many, but the three calls doing 24,000 contracts this week. Listen, these are the ones going out in May as well. Big day is today, a little over 10,000 today, 9,000 on Monday, 2,000 on Tuesday, 3,200 on Wednesday. Opening looks like every day except for Wednesday. So I guess if you think NatGas is going to turn around, you're intrigued with a little bit of the old bullish risk reversal, sell and put and buy and call. These might be, might be magical times for you in terms of setups out there. I'm curious. Carly was just talking about some effectively bullish risk reversals out there. So again, taking advantage of some of that skew. So intriguing stuff. Maybe maybe you're thinking about legging into those. If you are, I'm curious. Let us know, listeners. And you know, just to reinforce that it's all downside all the time, we're also seeing the one half put. <laughs> These are the contracts going out in May, doing 20,000 contracts this week. The big day for those, Monday, 9,600. 5,000 on Tuesday, 3,300 today, about 3,000 yesterday. It's like mostly closing earlier in the week. So maybe some folks taking the downside move, taking their puts off. In which case, that's a little early. We're obviously not quite at the one-half strike yet, but uh, intriguing stuff nonetheless. You still have on these contracts, you still have 30-odd days to go. So you can wait a little longer if you are waiting and get a little bit more juice out there. Maybe you think you got the move. I don't know. Either way, intriguing. The folks are starting to take off maybe some of those one-half puts. And not to be outdone, we saw the one-and-three-quarters puts also active. These are the ones going out in about four days. <laughs> Pretty active this week. The big day for those today, we did 8,200. And then 
Tuesday and Wednesday were both tied at 3,400 each, opening and closing each day, and then 2,800 slightly opening on Monday. So some back and forth action on the one and three quarters puts as well. Wow, this is <laughs> just intriguing, intriguing stuff. You got to look pretty far, listeners, to find a lot of call action here. How about the four halves doing 6,000 contracts? 5,500 of that today. These are the four halves, by the way, in July. So July four halves, 5,500 of them going up today, 500 yesterday. So total pretty much exactly 6,000 on the week. The rest of the week, nothing going up. So four halves opening for size in July. I don't know. You like that, listeners? Would you be overriding that against your futures? Would you be straight buying that? Like the three calls also in July doing 3,700 today. So maybe a bit of a... Bit of a vertical three, four, half doesn't really roll off the tongue and the numbers don't line up entirely either. So a bit of a weird one there if that is indeed the case. But I don't know, four halves in July. I'll have to see if I can dig up a price. Perhaps, perhaps they're getting a, a screaming deal on those bad boys and they're loading up to the upside. I'm not sure. Either way, what would you rather do with the four halves in July? Listen, would you be buying them or would you be selling them at these levels? Again, it's just like an equity, everything is pretty much within the, the first month and change out here. That's where the lion's share of the action. You go farther out, you go to Dece, and there's nothing. 650 contracts on the two half puts. So it's all very near data, which, again, it's hard to blame them. That gas is whipping around. It's almost triple digits ball. You want a lot of gamma at this point, so you got to be near the front portion of the curve. But, wow, that gas just, I don't know. Did you have a, a two-handle? Pretty much threatening it in your in your crystal ball, listeners. If you did, you certainly looking pretty good out here this week. Just really crazy stuff out here in the land of energy. As we keep on rolling, listeners, let's roll on out of energy and head on into a little bit of the old metals. Werewolves beware! It's time to explore the options activity in silver, gold, and other shiny things. It's time to talk metals. All right, everyone. Welcome to the shiny world of the metals out here. Well, maybe not to start with today. We're going to go base first and then see where our journey takes us from there. You want to find metals, listeners, cmegroup.com slash twifo. Pop out of energy. Going to go down one, two, three, four more slots to metals then normally we hang out in precious talk a little bit of the shiny stuff your silver is your gold not today we're going to start off with the base metals in particular copper copper number five on our movers and shakers up about six percent this week we were just talking with rich excel and he was talking about maybe the chinese demand thing was a little bit overdone and we had some other guests recently talking about chinese demand again so that's very much the driver's seat when you're talking about copper what's china doing out there copper right now a little over a four handle 4.09 out there in that front future how much paper out here about twenty seven thousand contracts so copper's doing more paper but not a ton there was a time though and it would do only a couple of thousand contracts it was not much better than oats so we wouldn't really talk about it much on the show but these days doing a little bit more paper enough to sink our teeth into at least and of that looks like been like an equity 50 percent pretty much of the paper going up in the april contract that has, oh, a whopping five days to go. <laughs> what is the vol out here? You might be wondering. It's about a 23 and a half in the April contract. We go a little bit farther out. Let's go to, let's say, go to May. That has about 27. So the vol pretty much in that uh, mid to high 20s level, pretty much everywhere you look here on the term structure. Coming off a little bit this week, off about nearly three points in this. April contract, you go a little bit farther out, the ball's off about a point. In terms of skew, not a huge evolution. The puts 3.7% bid last week, 3.8% bid this week. Calls flat last week, 1.8% cheap. So a little baby equity skew out here as well. And what is leading the dance out here is the 380 puts. I said we're at about a 4.09 listeners in copper, up about five and a quarter percent or about 20 odd cents on the week. If you go back to end of last week, show up about 6%. Again, the 380 puts, so interesting, leading the dance, 3,600 of those, 2,000 yesterday, 1,500 today, and a couple of hundred scattered earlier in the week. Most of that big chunk on Wednesday seems like it's closing, so that might make some sense as we're rallying away from that strike, folks bailing on those 380 puts, certainly makes some sense out there. Follow right behind it, looks like by 420 calls, doing 2,700 contracts. Uh, the big day for those, Wednesday, 1,300, 1,200 today, and the rest kind of scattered throughout the week. 
was like biased towards opening on the 420s. Again, that also makes sense as we're rallying toward that strike, seeing some opening paper out there. Maybe a bit of a risk reversal, even though closing on the puts, open on the calls. Intriguing stuff out there. Let's keep rolling a little bit farther out. Let's go down to the May contract that has about 32 days to go. And that one, we saw the 3.6 puts doing, yeah, about about 2,000 contracts this week. The big day Wednesday, 1,300 on Wednesday, about 500 today. Looks like, again, Wednesday was the day to take off some puts out here in copper. So I guess maybe some folks who were betting on what Rich was talking about a couple of weeks ago on the show, that Chinese demand being pretty weak, at least for right now, not materializing. So they're bailing on these puts they had in their back pocket. It certainly makes a fair amount of sense. 360 puts out here in June, also trading about 1,000 contracts this week. A pretty similar paper. Uh, since we're hanging out in the metals, let's pop up really quickly. Let's go to Uncle Mike's favorite. Let's go to our number three on the movers and shakers in the shiny stuff. Let's go to silver, up 7.04% since our show last week. If you go just this week, it's up about 3.2%. Hanging out at about a 23.20, so a nice pop here. Up 71 cents just this week for silver. So after looking kind of bad, getting beat up for the better part of this year, now some of this tumult. Some of this flight to quality, driving a little bit of paper in silver. How much? About 40,000 contracts. So not quite 2x copper, but a decent, decent little chunk of paper out here in silver. Silver, usually the number two behind gold. Gold's going to break the six-figure number for the metals. But silver, no slouch out there. Let's see. 31% of that paper going up in the April contract has about five days to go. So going to be pretty near-dated here as well. Ball is a little, a little bit shy of 30, about a 29.80 out here, off a little over four points, about 4.1 points. So Ball coming in a wee bit this week. You go a little bit farther out in the term structure, seems like most of the longer dated contracts are hanging out pretty close to a 30. So pretty much that's that 30 level across the board here for silver. Skew-wise, not a huge evolution this week either. The puts 2.4% cheap last week, 2.2% cheap this week. Last week, the call 6% bid this week. The call is 5.6% bid. Not a huge evolution on the skew. Going a little bit farther out to check some of the longer dated contracts. And that seems to be the case pretty much across the board. Calls are bid, puts are offered, and not a huge evolution on the week. So intriguing stuff. And of that, about 40,000 contracts. Looks like the big dog this week. Paper is really pretty scattered out here. The big dog are the 23 quarter calls in April. Going up 1,700 times. Again, 1,700, that's all it takes to top the list out here this week, listeners. And they went up pretty much about 1,000 today. The rest scattered throughout the week. Looks like back and forth, opening to closing all week long. 23 quarter is pretty much the at the money strike. So maybe not entirely surprising that we would land there just, and that would lead the dance, but just an intriguing strike <laughs> nonetheless. Right behind it, we have the 24 calls doing 1,300 contracts. Doesn't seem like we have any verticals. It seems like independent paper going up each day on both strikes. And then right behind it, we have the 20 puts in May. These go out in about like about 33 days. 20 puts doing 1,600 contracts. The bulk of that today, 1,100 today, 400 on Tuesday. The rest, obviously, not much. Looks like opening on Tuesday. We don't know about today, but I don't know, listeners. May 20 puts in silver after you've had a nice little run. Would you be buying or would you be selling those out there? Maybe another good little flash poll. Looks like it might be some vertical paper today because we all have about 1,100 of the 20 puts going up and about 1,100 of the 21 puts going up. So might be someone taking advantage of this move, taking off the 20s, rolling up to the 21s. I've seen weirder things out there, in which case getting themselves a little bit tighter protection or – if they're short in those, playing a little bit closer to the fire, getting a little bit riskier, getting a little bit more juice for themselves. And if we go even farther out, listeners, we go out to July. It's the 30 calls going up 1,300 times this week. 600 yesterday, 500 today, about 200 on Monday. Back and forth, opening to closing all week long. So interesting. Some folks bailing on the 30s. Some folks open on the 30s this week. Still got a way to go to get to 30, so. Intriguing. We'd see so much action on the 30 strike already out here. But what about you? Have you have you changed your mind on silver after having a bit of a, a rough start to the year? Are you starting to look at it perhaps a little bit more favorably? Or are you perhaps some of these folks who are maybe loading up on some 20 puts? I'm curious. Hit us up 
Send us your thoughts as we keep on rolling, listeners. Just a facts edition this week. Let's keep on rolling right on into the AGs. It's time to get our hands dirty exploring the latest options, trades, and trends in corn, wheat, soybeans, and more. It's time to talk AGs. All right, everyone. Welcome to uh, the wonderful world of AGs. We're going to go into that drop down pop out of metals which is pretty much all the way at the bottom and go all the way to the top of the list which is ags then in product family you're going to click on grains and oil seeds and then we have our choice we have soybean oil soybean meal <laughs> we have our old friend the hogs class three milk even technically lumber is in there even though lumber as we all know doesn't really trade any options by the way if you want a little bit of a comparison the soybean meal Doing right now on the week, we've got about 109,000 contracts for the meal versus the oil doing about 90,000. So they're actually fairly close. We talked about the oil not that long ago. Let's go out to the meal instead. By the way, soybeans themselves doing about 300 plus thousand contracts. So obviously more volume there. But we're going to hang out in the meal, change things up a little bit. Where is soybean meal trading right now? 43820. Off 27, almost 28 handles, nearly 6% on the week. Obviously, if you go back to our show last week, it's off about 5 and 3 quarters percent. So intriguing stuff out here. Soybeans have been moving quite a bit of late. Talked about them quite a few times. The beans, the oil, the meal, all over the place. So once again, making it on our radar this week. How much paper this week? About 110,000 contracts, like we said. So nothing to sneeze at out here in the old soybean meal. Of that, 41% going up in the May contract has about 29 days to go. We're going to hang out out there, listeners. What is the volume? You might be asking out here in soybean meals at about a 26, up about 3.2 points. So, again, a lot of our contracts we're talking about are flirting with the mid 20s to 30 handle. It seems like that's just the the level of volume you're looking at these days. Even equities flirting with that sometimes. So, intriguing stuff. How that mid 20s to about 30, unless you're talking the cryptos, then you're getting into close to triple digits and that gas, of course. But outside of those. Most of them seem to be hanging out around this vol level. In terms of skew, last week the puts, 1.8% bid. This week, 1.6% bid. So not a huge evolution there. The calls, 1.6% bid last week, about 1% cheap. So not a huge evolution. Skew-wise this week, let's see what was leading the dance out here. I said we're at about a 438 on the at the money. It was the 480 calls in May that were leading the dance Doing about 10,000, almost 11,000 contracts this week. The big day today, 7,500 today. And then 2,300 on Wednesday. Not much to speak of the rest of the week. Opening yesterday, not clear what we're doing. today. Actually, there's about, only about 4,800 contracts open. So it's like we're opening again today out here. So opening paper on the 480 calls here. Interesting. Going out in about 30 days out here. Right behind it, we have the 500s. Doing about 9,000 contracts. Again, the big day is today. 5,500, 1,800 yesterday, 1,200 on Tuesday, about 600 on Monday. Back and forth opening to closing throughout the week. But obviously, the lion's share of the paper going up today. So maybe we're seeing a bit of a roll from the 480s to the 500s. Again, it's, it's kind of early for that paper to be going up. We're a long way from 480, but we have seen weirder things out there. Also worth noting, it seems like 480 is the strike du jour, listeners, because they're also trading out here in. July, four days in July, doing 3,600 contracts this week. Uh, the big day today, 1,400. Actually, I take it back. The big day was Tuesday. 2,000 go up on Tuesday, 1,300 today. Also worth noting the 500s, the pars trading here in July today and this week as well. About 3,300 of those. Half of that, about 1,500 going up today. Uh, the rest scattered throughout the week. Back and forth, opening the closing on that one as well. So no clear bias to the paper. The numbers for today line up, so it could be a bit of a 480, 500 vertical slash roll going up there as well. Now, intriguing stuff out here. Let's go a little bit farther out, see if we see any other interesting and or aberrant paper out here. 440 puts. Again, these are in July going up about 2,000 times. The big day for those was Wednesday, 1,500, 400 today, about 100 on Tuesday. Mostly closing on Wednesday, so some folks bailing on those 440 puts there on wednesday wow interesting stuff out here for the world of the beans you go a little bit farther out as you said before on the show ags kind of trade by their own rules of engagement they usually trade around the crop rotation so not seeing a ton going farther out out here this week it seems like it's mostly 
on the near dated side of the spectrum, which is kind of interesting. Speaking of near dated, let's get to it, listeners. A little bit of the old equities. It's time to explore the volatility swings, skew changes, and hot options trades in your favorite indices. It's time to talk equities. All right, everyone, welcome to the wonderful world of equities. Go into that drop down, pop out of ags, go down three slots to equity indexes, and we're going to go into the product family U.S. index E-mini. We'll see where the mood takes us from there. By the way, I was talking to our friend, the Flowmaster, about all this near data paper we're seeing in SPX versus what we're seeing in the E-mini contracts here. And how I mentioned that we're seeing boxes these days in the E-mini, which is not something we normally would see. And he seemed kind of surprised by that as well. So we'll see if our friend doing the par calls is back up to his tricks this week. Uh, speaking of equities, let's set the table from a ball perspective. Coming in to start of the show, we had VIX at about a 2370. So that puts it up about three, almost 3.3 points. So, you know, ball has been vacillating around as exhibited by our friend VBIX, the ball of ball at about a 111. It's up 28 and a half points from where it was this time last week. So VBIX was starting to erode. Now all this noise from the Fed talking us up, yelling, talking us down, contagion fears. Now the market rallying again today, then starting maybe give up the ghost. We're now red in the Dow. S&P is pretty much unched. So all that green we had on the screen earlier this morning is now pretty much, they're pretty much giving it all up. They drove the S&P up over 4,000 this morning. Now we're back down to around 39, 38. So whatever rally we had going, couldn't really catch much of a bid out there, listeners. Ball Q, the at the money ball of the NASDAQ 100 at around 24 and a half when we kicked off the show. That one's still down, down about a third of a point. But again, that's coming off of a more lofty level, obviously, than S&P ball. That puts that spread, man, that spread has come in quite a bit, <laughs> almost four points, about 3.65 points tighter. That means the VIX to ball Q are trading much closer this week. They're about a point premium, about 0.9 between the two. So again, that's kind of interesting. Usually you expect to see much more of a gulf between ball Q and VIX. When they get close, that's when things get a little bit interesting. Now, speaking of interesting, let's see what's going on out here in the E-mini this week. How much paper on the tape list? Oh, 3.6 million contracts. It's a Fed week, so you're going to expect maybe a million extra contracts flocking in this week, and that's exactly what we're seeing. And of that, 20% is going away in a few seconds, actually. So I better click on it now before, before it rolls off my screen. <laughs> we're hanging out at a 39 uh, when we ran this earlier, 39.66 after flirting with the 39.30s out there. So, And it was the 39 quarter puts leading the dance out here in the near data stuff with 25, actually 27,000 contracts. Before we get to that, actually, let's go a little bit farther out. Because it was, as usual, our friends expiring in a day, the 33.75 puts <laughs> doing 50,000 contracts. 25,000 yesterday, 25,000 today. So in terms of volume, right behind it, we have the 3,900 puts doing almost 50,000 contracts this week. These are the ones that are expiring tomorrow, listeners. Again, 49,918. 21,000 of that coming today. 14, almost 15,000 yesterday. 8,000 on Tuesday. 5,600 on Monday. Opening all week long. So opening persistently on that 3,900 strike. Man, that's interesting. Are you overwriting those, listeners? Are you buying those? If you're buying them, Coming up against it, you got one more day if it's something to happen here, some magic to happen. But intriguing stuff out here, 3,800. You know, 3,900, that's not dire enough for you. You want to go a little bit darker. How about 3,800, also expiring tomorrow? 34, almost 35,000 of those bad boys trading this week. 19,000 of them, so half of them <laughs> pretty much. More than half trading on Monday. I mean, crazy. 8,000 on Tuesday. 5,000 on Wednesday, about 3,000 today. So forget the 3,900s. Tons of opening paper on the 3,800 strike listeners. Man, 3,800. What does it take <laughs> to get there? This point in a day, that would be, that'd be pretty difficult. But crazier things have happened. Let's keep looking here really quickly. Back to the contracts expiring in a couple of seconds. The 39 quarter puts. Went up 28,000 of those, 26,800 going up today. And it looks like we had 39 quarter and 39 halves, maybe some verticals as well, because about 21,600 of the 39 halves also traded today. So maybe we've got a bit of a quarter half put spread going up. Interesting. I don't hate that. 
going up today. All this expiring in a few minutes. Let's go a little bit farther down. 4,000 puts not to be outdone. Going all the way out to the March contract, a whopping eight days. So a lifetime in equities now. Doing nearly 30,000 contracts. The big day for those Wednesday. 21,000 of the 4,000 puts going up on Wednesday. Makes sense. Fed talking. Round number. We're vacillating with it. Not surprised to see folks piling into the 4,000 puts on Wednesday, 5,000 on Tuesday, 3,400 only today. Speaking of stuff, if you were loading up on those earlier this week, you're looking pretty good right now. And right behind it, we have the 3,800 puts yet again. <laughs> these have a little bit longer to go, though. You got about eight days for these. You got some time on your hands here. Looks like the big day for those is today. Actually, 6,500 today, 5,000 Wednesday. Actually, I take it back. Tuesday, 8,600, 3,000 on Monday. So trading pretty actively all week long. The big day was Tuesday with 8,600 contracts. Back and forth opening to closing on this 3,800 strike. Have you been diving into these near-dated equities, listeners? If so, let me know. These were you lining up, 3,900, 3,800. 3, uh, at least for tomorrow, is a pretty pretty rough road to climb. 4,000 puts. Are you doing those verticals, 39 half, 39 quarters, something else entirely? I'm curious. Hit us up. Let us know, listeners. A lot of intriguing stuff. Out there. Speaking of intriguing stuff and letting us know, listeners, let's get on out into it. A little bit of your futures options feedback. It's time for your questions, comments, and insights. It's time for futures options feedback. Submit your questions at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, stocktwits.com slash options insider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. You can also submit your feedback via our Options Insider radio network mobile app, available for iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire devices. You can even ask your questions live via our Mixler chat room. So grab the Mixler app or just search for Options Insider at mixler.com. That's M-I-X-L-R.com. All right, everybody, welcome to your feedback. And you know what? I missed one really quickly, so let's do a real quick hit into the crypto right now. It's time to explore the volatile world of Bitcoin, Ether, and more. It's time to talk about crypto. Well, I mentioned Bitcoin listeners blowing the doors off this week, up nearly 10%. Uh, it's up about 4% just this week alone. Again, 28,095 right now. So looking nice and frothy out there again. But what really caught my eye out here is how long have we been talking about these big 5X multiplier Bitcoin options and saying, you know, when are they going to catch fire? When are they going to actually do something? 10 contracts a week, 20 contracts a week, big deal, nothing going up. That changes this week, listeners. 5,030 contracts. Again, it's no e mini, it's no euro dollar or three month sofa. But hey, for this, for this contract, given its history, this is a tsunami of paper. So, folks, all you need is a 20-odd percent move in Bitcoin over a couple of weeks. And go figure. People will load up on the options. Again, 5,000. This has got to be the most active week we've ever seen. I'll go crunch the numbers for our Crypto Rundown show on Monday. But that's a heck of a lot of paper, listeners. And of that, what was leading the dance? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's why I love crypto. It's the June... 50,000 calls, listeners. Yes, 5 0. Going up 1,600 times, 800 times yesterday, 800 times today. It looks like, looks like it's a fly, listeners. It's the 40,000, 50,000, 55,000 fly. So a bit of a broken wing fly. Going up 400 by 800 by 400 times yesterday and today. Interesting. You like that, listeners? 40, 50, 55. Obviously, broken wings, you get a little bit more room for that to run. I'll have to go look at the prices, see what they're getting that off for. But it might be a relatively inexpensive swing for the upside fences. Make no mistake, that's what you're doing with that trade, right? You're either hedging yourself against a little bit of an upside blow up or more commonly probably speculating on it. So that would explain the explosion of paper here. That's 3,200 contracts in that one trade. So that. That explains why we're doing over 5,000 contracts this week. Some fund woke up to the joys of upside, upside call flies in Bitcoin. Man, 
doesn't seem like that long ago we were mocking the 30,000, saying that's a bit of a bridge too far. And now here we are talking 40, 50, 55 call flies in Bitcoin options out here. Outside of that, it looks like it's the 26,000 calls doing 150. That was the other leading contender. These are the April contracts. They still have a little bit of time on their hands. Wow. That's a that's an intriguing fly and not what I expected at all. But then again, it is it is crypto. Are we back in those heady days, listeners? Are we back in the swing for the fences? Back not too long ago in Bitcoin, all the open interest was 100,000, 200,000 strike. Extremely optimistic stuff. All that kind of went the way of the dodo last year. Maybe we'll start to see more of that uh, opening up again. Let's go really quickly and check the micro while we're at it as well. Micro Bitcoin. Let's see if they managed to follow suit. And the answer is not quite. The little stuff, for whatever reason, the little ones still not attracting attention. They're doing better. 1,700 contracts is better than the 70 they've been doing. But still, these are aimed squarely at you, the retail customer out there. Why are you not trading these micro crypto? Is it the margin? I hear a lot of complaints about the margin. So that's what, the, what it is. I'm curious. Send in your thoughts because I want to know. These, these should be more appealing than they are. Yeah, for whatever reason, not lighting it up. Since we're hanging out in, in crypto, let's look really quickly at our friend ETH as well. Micro ETH, also not blowing the doors off. About 1,000 contracts on the tape. Let's go to the big boy ETH, 83. So ETH not lighting it up. It's just that fly in the big Bitcoin options that is dominating the tape and sucking up all the oxygen in the room. Before we get out of here, we are in your feedback segment. Let's get some of your thoughts. We asked you folks last week, everyone has contagion risk on the brain. So we thought we'd ask you last week after all the madness out there, is this a canary in the coal mine, all these bank meltdowns, or is this just a tempest in a teapot? And you folks, uncharacteristically for you, were actually not able to make up your minds. <laughs> it ended up 51% of you choosing a canary in the coal mine of worst yet to come, and 49% saying this is the tempest is just going to blow over. So apparently you are as mixed as the market is right now, whether this is an ill omen for the future. Right now we're asking you folks, What's your favorite option strategy to leg into your positions at lower prices? Is it the old ratio, one by two put spread, buying one, selling two? Is it just the straight up plain vanilla short put? Or is it something else entirely, listeners? And this one kind of playing out the way I expected it right now. Short put running away with it, 47.4%. Ratio one by two put spread, 39.5%. And then other bringing up the rear, 13.5%. Remember, if you do choose other, what is your other? We want to hear from you folks. All right. That music means we've come to the end of another epic journey through the world of all things futures options. Man, what a journey it was this week from Nat Gas to Bitcoin with a few stops in metals and in ags along the way. Just craziness afoot out there. listeners. That's why you folks are tuning into the show in mass. A lot going on in the world of futures options these days. Remember, if you want to see all these reports for yourselves anytime, not just when you listen into the show, cmegroup.com slash TWIFO, T-W-I-F-O. That's the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires out there. And, of course, that's going to do it for us on the broadcast day today. Back again tomorrow, listeners, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern breaking down all the madness in the world of volatility on volatility views back again after that exclusively for you cool cats in the secret club with options oddities breaking down a crazy week for unusual options activity if you want to see that for yourselves you want to see the nearly 200 episodes we have already available for you exclusively on that pro podcast feed great access to giveaways and live streams and everything else the options insider.com slash pro is the place to go and we'll see you back here next week all the way through to next thursday another episode of this week in futures options stay safe out there this week in futures options is brought to you by cme group the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world manage risks and seize opportunities. CME Group offers the deepest and most liquid options on futures across all asset classes, including interest rates, equity indexes, foreign exchange, energy, agriculture, and metals. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, 
visit cmegroup.com slash options. This broadcast is intended for informational and educational purposes only and does not constitute trading advice or the solicitation of purchases or sale of any futures or options. The rulebook of the applicable exchange should be consulted as the authoritative source on all current contract specifications. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 